So one thing I did want to ask you about. So a lot of the people yeah. in my audience aren't like involved. In, like there's a lot of people that watch VTubers, but not mm-hmm. a lot of people that do it. So I was kind of curious to ask about like the software that you actually would be using in this space. I'm sure a lot of people are kind of curious about like what pieces go into this that actually make the whole thing work. So what I can tell you right off the bat, outside of like, if you, if you want it to just work without all the extra stuff, mm-hmm. which you know, the extra stuff's in the guide, um, you need VTube Studio. Mm-hmm. You absolutely need that. You absolutely need Face Tracker off of FlatHub. Mm-hmm. You need the file Densysoft provided people when, when Ren was reaching out to them at the time mm-hmm. for the IP.txt file. And then you need to have Steam. You need to have that in Steam compatibility mode. You need to make sure your computer's up to date. That's like a general thing. You need OBS in order to stream with it. Um, choose the flat hub, flat pack, or the uh, other system package. Your mileage may vary on it depending on your distribution. One thing is usually better than the other depending on what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to want audio capturing software if you're using more than one computer. Uh, if it's just one computer, you might still need that uh, in order to like configure where your audio is going because sometimes if you want to play music on stream if you're not doing it through like a media source if you're not doing it through like vlc or whatever you're going to want to make it to where um firefox is being captured via a jack input client mm-hmm. um which is you know i usually would suggest at least having uh you know pipewire the, the graphical audio bay the class mixer which helps you change some things if you were to click on the the hd audio generic on it sort of like mess with the audio a little bit mm-hmm. uh, easy effects will give you virtual cables you don't really need to mess with it if you don't know what you're doing with it um but if you need these extra audio cables it will at least give you two for virtual audio which you can then route to other applications and have it play through um like have it being routed through the graphical audio interface which is qpw graph mm-hmm. um and of course discord you can use a discord flat pack if you're wanting audio with screen share, you're probably going to want to use a web app for that. That way you can at least guarantee that that will work. Um, I don't really recommend using any Discord client that is not the system package, the flat pack, or the web client, because um, it's usually against TOS. You don't really want to break that. Um, and you're you're going to need like Proton. Uh, you can either get Proton up QT or you can get Proton Plus. Actually, I wasn't aware to of get Proton your... Plus. But you, this is actually Proton. something new that I found out about from the guide. Yeah, uh, Proton Plus is a thing, which I found out about it because uh, the person who makes Nobara is, you know, or helped make Nobara, I think is Glorious Egg Roll. Mm-hmm. Um, they replaced Proton Up QT with Proton Plus. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it, it's a better graphical interface. You can tell which things are going a lot easier. Right, you right. Just click on it and it works. It works how it's intended to. It's the same thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, just, you just get that, you get that other option if you want to choose the other thing, mm-hmm. depending on what works the best. Um, you're, you're definitely going to need to make sure you configure your system how you would, um, like at least with OBS, especially like with your audio and everything, make sure everything's being routed correctly. Make people, make sure people can hear you and see your model. You're going to want to possibly go through the guide and, you know, if you're using live 2d, um, you're going to want to use a window capture. You're going to want to also make sure you get either a blue magenta or green screen or a sort of green like screen or like a, a green screen like color. That way you can have your model show up without having any transparency issues because that can happen. Um, I guess like the only hurdles with that is like if you're doing collabs or somebody has certain things, but you can always change it to a specific color that you can kind of mitigate that. Mm-hmm. Um, but Regardless of that, it still works. Uh, another thing you're going to need to do is you're going to have to go to VTube Studio and adjust some settings. Um, because what's going to happen is your your VTuber's eyes are going to start pointing up for no reason. And the mouth movements might not be correct. And I would suggest going to the guide, going to the PDF file or the uh, Windows document and see a visual of what I did to get that fixed. Because mm-hmm. you have to adjust some values to make sure it's at least showing up correctly. Um, without having it turned off because my eyes will still move mm-hmm. you know so like it still works which is really good and also um adjusting the mouth movements to make them look more natural is probably like another a good thing you can do within vtube studio you could still use all the vnet network connectivity within vtube studio on linux 
um, because the interface just is like it interfaces just like any other game that doesn't have anti cheat um, that isn't compatible, especially Vanguard. And um, you're you're also going to be able to download any of these asset files. Uh, the way the fo- folders are structured, at least on the Steam, um, at least with the system files and maybe even the flat pack if you were to pull up the .var files, um, which is basically really similar in with how it gets structured. Um, you can you can put your streaming assets in there too. Like these assets will work, uh, and you won't be running into those problems after you've everything all set up and and running. You can verify that it works. You might run into a few things depending on how your model reacts to some of these settings. They're just the point of reference. They're not like the exact thing, but it's basically a thing to help get people started. Because some people might have more elaborate live 2D models that they do to decide to switch to Linux. But I'm going to say it's not impossible because I'm doing it right now. <laughs> there's a lot of pieces that go into that. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. There's definitely. I've, I've, I have. I, I'm smarter than I look. <laughs> Christ. Yeah, people have <laughs> joked like, hey Brody, you should become a VTuber, you should become a VTuber. Like that's a that's a lot of extra work to do that I don't even particularly want to do right now. It can be, but it's uh you know, it's really easy if mm-hmm. you know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it is once before. you get everything set up. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Like, you know, if you need help, we can help you with that. But like <laughs> Yeah, like it, it just depends on how your audience is going to take it. So, because some people may not uh, like that transition from moving from IRL to VTubing, because I I experienced that for a while um, mm-hmm. until people kind of got over it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll compromise to do PNG tuber on stream sometimes. <laughs> That's actually not a bad idea. Doing PNG, you just need to get Video Tube Mini. Mm-hmm. Uh, make sure you run it through. Make sure you run it through Window Capture. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, like, I guess, like, the days you don't want to use webcam, you can kind of just use that. Or you mm-hmm. can use, like, a Fugitech to kind of get around the whole uh, program. Because Fugitech's also a good option for that, because it reads off Discord, mm-hmm. as long as you're in a call. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know things. It, it, there's a lot that goes into it, and uh-huh. it, it's, yeah, it's just something that people will have to spend the time to, to to at least learn getting done, but you're not going to be spending as much time as you would if you weren't using the guide. Right, right, right. Well, yeah, yeah. I, if, the guide, if the guide is not making things easier, then the guide's not doing its job. <laughs> yeah, which honestly, um, that does bring up something. Mm-hmm. If people are going to need a visual guide in the future, Vinny did say Vinny's going to make a visual guide on it. Um, which will end up going through the steps of everything, getting everything working that way. That way, once you know Vinny has that out, I can link that to the text guide, and we sort of would have a visual. It'd probably be like after prerequisites, after the starting part of it. You know, when you're and after installing your distro, I think I'd probably put it like right before, um, right before VTube Studio mm-hmm. and, and the whole guide. That way, like people could be like, oh, okay, well this this is where this video is linked. And this is where I can kind of like start watching it. That way, people can, you know, get that, get that, um, get that idea, get that visual idea. Because some there are some people who do not, who do not do good at all reading stuff. Yeah, yeah. And having a visual guide will definitely help them a lot better. Mm-hmm. Which yeah. I'm going to assume when Vinny does it, Vinny's going to go through Arch. Mm-hmm. Um, if anybody else wanted to make a similar guide, they can as well, and I can link those as well um to get it to get it like up and running that way we have like all these different versions of stuff that way you have that compatibility mm-hmm. um and that way you're not running to any more walls and you can sort of slow down the video okay this person he, you know they did this there they did this there okay now i got it working that's good all right the next thing like that way they're not continuing to get frustrated with it because i right. think that's where the main problem comes from is all the information originally was spread out mm-hmm. people weren't finding it like oh yeah this is cool you know but i don't know if i can actually use this i don't know if it's practical well it is practical enough you just have to apply yourself to get it done mm-hmm. um and, and, you, and you gotta like sort of like make yourself understand stuff that you know maybe you know the general windows consumer probably wouldn't have understood at, at first mm-hmm. but it's not impossible like anybody can do this it just takes the amount of time and effort that you know to, to get everything else going before you can start get going through the guide right um because 
the first step is not oh it's the first step's not oh i want to vtube on linux the first step is i want to use linux mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but yeah if you can't find yourself feeling familiar using uh linux full stop like going that extra step getting the rest of it set up just isn't yeah. worth the effort then like find just try it out something whether it be mint or ubuntu or fedora nobara things yeah. like that just use that on something preferably like a machine that you don't really care about or if you have like to a like laptop. a virtual machine yeah like if you can chuck yeah. it on a laptop like that's, that's that's great but like yeah don't change your main machine straight away like unless you yeah. know what you're getting into and you're willing to have things be broken like it straight up just took me at least a couple months before i even was like okay i'm gonna go ahead and put it on my gaming pc mm -hmm. and it probably took me a little longer to put it on my streaming pc because i didn't know how i was going to handle that and eventually when i did figure that out i was like okay i got it all working maybe i should make a guide on this mm -hmm. and uh I, I just you know created the guide i started to reach out to people like kusabara ren I eventually started getting more people interested because venny originally was going to wait till 2025 and then you know i eventually you know talking with venny uh venny was like okay fuck it i'm just gonna use linux wait, why uh, 2025 just... huh why 2025 uh, october because October 2025 is when Windows 10 goes out of uh, oh, it's, it's, end of, it's end of life. Okay. I was like, I'm not waiting. Because I, I was getting anxious. Like, okay, I got my tax return. I'm gonna get this GPU. I'm gonna put this in here. And I'm like, okay, I'm not waiting till 2025. I'm doing this now. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> because prior to that, I was using it on my laptop. Everything was going great there. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was like, okay, well, I'm like having a good experience. I'm still having a good experience, but the, mm -hmm. it hasn't like. I haven't had the issue except that one time with <laughs> dual booting Windows on a computer, um, which they screwed that up. Uh, uh, I'll just tell you about it. I put Windows and Linux Mint on my computer, right? Mm -hmm. And I was using Windows to stream a couple of times just to see how bad Windows 11 was, which is it's really terrible. Um, I go back on Linux Mint to see what it is. And I start noticing the screen was having this problem where it was like sectioning off parts of it. And it was having like this weird graphical error. And I was okay. like, this is really, this is really weird. Um, and then eventually I was just like, okay, I'm just going to reinstall Linux Mint on this. I'm going to just try to get this to work. And because uh, like to get, to make Windows 11 usable, you have to like do whole, all this other stuff. And it's a way more of a headache than just installing Linux. So like, I don't even recommend 11. Because it's just, <laughs> you lose like 20% of your computer's like, computing power for that kind of stuff it's really bad 